Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm delivering another Bakugo fanfiction. This one took me a while to write despite its shortness due to me constantly getting uh, distracted by various things. Also I halfway abandoned the story I wrote first because I introduced too many plot threads and I didn't know how to resolve them. Um. So yeah, this is a this this story was basically written out of sheer desperation to just upload something. Um, I still hope you enjoy it. But before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you to uh, watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and please, for the love of God, share it around. YouTube sure as hell doesn't do that. It keeps just recommending me people that do similar content to me. Just get away with breaking the rules. Anyways, anyways, uh, I also have a merch store on the Patreon, both links are down in the description, so is my Discord. Uh, would be nice if you could join me there, and also any fan art you do of me, you can send it there and then you can see my live reaction to it. That's just an example, however. Um, just, just hey, enjoy the show, huh? Come on. You should have known better. After all, there was a reason he was in Class 1A, and you in Class 1B. Not only that, he was already infamous for his temper. And despite that, he still wanted to be a hero. Which was commendable. But your own pride had gotten in the way. Bakugo Katsuki, the explosive boy from the hero calls, had sent you straight to the nurse's office. Upon your teacher's question, all you could say was that it had been your fault for mocking him. He had failed the test for the provisional hero license, and like most other students, you thought he deserved it after mocking you at the tournament a few months ago. He had left you with a few damaged ribs and a broken arm. If it weren't for your quirk, it could have probably ended worse. Your quirk, nine lives, gave you the agility and awareness of a cat. You could even see in the dark. Not just that, thanks to a cute pair of cat ears, you also have very good hearing. But all that didn't help you when the teacher of Class 1A had visited you with Vlad King close behind. A tussle like this wasn't all too rare, but still raised a lot of flags. Vlad King clearly was more concerned about your well-being, while Ayazawa just roasted you. It was almost more comfortable than the cast around your arm. If it weren't for Vlad King, you probably would have broken out into tears. Eventually, the conversation died down, and Ayazawa left, growling something. Vlad King, on the other hand, stayed. You know this is hard for me, too, he muttered. What were you even thinking? You looked down at your feet. Manomoa said that Class 1A makes fun of us for not being part of their class. Vlad King blinked, anger rising in his chest. He was about to call Aizawa back. His colleague had been too interested in what happened. He didn't stop to ask why it happened. What did he say specifically? You sighed. I don't remember a lot. Oh, sweet summer child, he said before gently rubbing over your head. You purred, and then blushed in embarrassment. S sorry sir. Your teacher laughed. <laughs> oh well, I'll be going now. You'll be brave now. And next time the boy runs his mouth, don't listen, 
and just tell Kendo. He gave another quick chuckle and left the room, leaving you alone with your thoughts. Which was horrible. The more time you spent alone, the more you felt less like a victim and more like the bad guy. You sighed. You were uncomfortable. You couldn't even lean on your side. Shifting, you tried to reach for your phone when the door opened again. It was Bakugo. You inhaled sharply. He was wearing a black hoodie over his UA uniform. Hood pulled so deep it almost covered his nose. His eyes averted your gaze. Where's recovery, girl? Was the first thing he said. This caught you off guard. With a shrug, you replied. She said I should stay here until she comes back. Then she fixes... This. And it has been two hours by now, and... Uh, no. I don't know. Bakugo sighed. At least no one else is here. He prowled. Yeah, uh, why are you here? You asked. Your patience running thing. To apologize, idiot. You scoffed. I am an idiot? You are the one who lost their temper! His face was going red. You are spreading rumors about us! I wasn't spreading rumors, I was just repeating what the rumors told me. His eyes narrowed. You think talking about them would make it better? What an apology. If you weren't such a brat with your... The next part you spoke was in a mocking tone. Super awesome quirk, these rumors wouldn't exist in the first place. He ground his teeth. He had a strange look in his eyes. You probably had a nerve. Stop trying to piss me off. He growled. I'm trying to be nice to you, you hag! Hag? Where did that come from? And you think a proper apology is calling me an idiot? And a hag? He wanted to leave, but it was like something in the back of his mind was stopping him. You need someone who slaps you every time you act out like a child. You growled. His hands turned to fists. A strange feeling was overcoming him. And he hated how comforting it was. Apologize. Properly. He ordered. He mumbled something. I didn't hear that. I said I'm sorry. You grinned. Apology not accepted. This was probably the one thing he didn't want to hear. What else am I supposed to do? Kiss your feet? Your smug grin was all he needed to see as a reply. I'm not doing it, he growled. But my arm just hurts so much and I can't reach my itching foot. You knew full well you were pressing your luck. But... What happened next, you didn't expect. The mad lad actually did it. Half-heartedly, sure, but he did it. There, he growled. You both were blushing by this point. You accepting his apology must really mean a lot. Or maybe... You leaned back and smiled. Why are you coming around now, Katsuki? His lips quivered. As I was said, since what happened with Deku at the training area, I'm on thin ice, and he wanted to apologize before he makes me, and makes my punishment worse. You sighed. <sighs> Wrong answer. His left eye twitched. But he stayed calm enough to not shout again. That is the right answer, then. 
He chuckled and tried to mimic his voice. I'm sorry for letting my pride get in the way of my better judgment. And I'm sorry I hurt you. He bit his lower lips before repeating what you said. There, apology accepted now. He muttered. You really wanted to enjoy this more, but something else came to mind. When you were trying to hit me earlier and I dodged what seemed to be your special move, and, well, just now, you called me a hag. What's up with that? He blushed, hard this time, and not out of anger. Just... You reminded me of someone. You raised an eyebrow. Yeah, <laughs> the big Bakugo Katsuki respecting someone so much he has a very own insult for them. Who could that be? He gave you a dumbfounded look. D did you just... You slapped the hand of your unbroken arm over your mouth and looked away. He chuckled. And you blushed. Stop it, you mumbled. Fine, you caved. Apology accepted. He sighed in relief. By the way, who started talking shit behind my back? You smiled. Manamawa. His mouth went up into a grin of pure evil intent. He was about to turn around before you spoke up. Each of us has shared and or done something embarrassing now in the last five minutes. His head turned back to you and you smiled. Let's do more embarrassing stuff together and maybe I figure out who I'm reminding you of all by myself. You purred. He scratched the back of his head. <laughs> Yeah, fine. Talk to me when your arm is sealed up so I can break it again. See ya. And with that, he left.